Mandy and Mindy. Mindy and Mandy. Mandy and Mindy. Hey you guys, welcome back to See Mindy Mom. And if you are new here, I'm so glad that you found me. I'm Mindy and this is my kitchen. Today I am bringing you three cozy crock pot soup recipes and I am collaborating with an amazing creator here on YouTube, so stay tuned. All right, you guys, it may be getting toward the end of the month here, but it is still Crocktober. And if you watch my channel, you are probably like, who are you kidding, Mindy? It is always Crocktober in your house because I use my crock pots all the time. Yes, I said crock pots plural because I have multiple crock pots. My evenings get kind of crazy, especially as I am taxiing kids around to various and sundry activities in the mom shovel. So having something ready for us to eat in the crock pot has saved us from going through the drive through multiple times. I'm very excited about this video because I am collaborating with Mandy in the making. I have actually watched Mandy channel for several years now. I think I started watching her pretty close to when she started. And so I was really excited whenever she and I started exchanging some messages and coming up with some ideas about how we could collaborate. Mandy lives in South Carolina with her husband and her son. She's been married to her husband for 21 years. So my husband and I are just a few years behind her. We're at 16 years. And I actually did not know this. Maybe she's mentioned it on her channel before, but I thought it was a really neat fact about her. She actually started her channel with her husband because they felt like they were in a dinner rut and so they wanted to challenge themselves to really come up with some new recipes and some delicious dinners and family meals to share so they decided to start a channel and document their journey trying to come up with some delicious meals and I certainly think that she has been successful. If you've never watched Mandy's channel before, you're missing out, be sure to go and check it out. I will leave her video that she's doing here with me linked in the description box, but have a look around the rest of her videos. She puts up usually about two videos a week and one of them is almost always a dinners video. She calls it winter dinners and these are recipes that are new to her family or favorite recipes that she is sharing and she not only shows how she's preparing the recipes, but she actually, she and her husband try them on camera so they can tell you what they think about them. I feel like she has a wide variety of recipes as well. And I guess a lot of them are to the taste of our family, which is why I keep getting drawn back to her channel. Before we dive in, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I would love to have you hang around if you're new here and see what we're cooking up in our family kitchen here. And thank you again to Mandy for doing this collaboration with me. Mandy and Mindy. Mindy and Mandy, Mandy and Mindy. Just kind of rolls off the tongue, right? <laughs> The first recipe that I'm sharing is for a cheddar sausage potato soup, but this one I felt like was different than others that we have tried because it actually includes beer in the recipe and I think that gives it sort of like a fall flavor. Of course, you could use chicken broth in place of beer if you want, but here is a little snapshot of the ingredients that I'm using. I'm using a pound of Italian sausage. I used six small russets. These were pretty small russet potatoes, one yellow onion, a few cloves of garlic, two carrots, one stalk of celery, the kind of beer that I decided to use was this Guinness Stout that we had in the refrigerator. You'll just need a 12 ounce beer and the kind of beer will change the flavor just a little bit. It does call for two cups of chicken broth, but I'm just going to use two cups of water and about a tablespoon and a half of my chicken broth base. I started out by dicing up my carrots and celery and I also chopped up my potatoes. I peeled them and chopped them so that they were in about, you know, little like one inch cubes or so. I used my handy dandy little non-electrical food chopper thingy majig. I don't even know what this is called, <laughs> but basically it's great for chopping onions or really just, you know, any kind of firm vegetable. All you do is put them in there and you pull, you put the lid on and pull that little cord and it'll chop everything up. And I like that I don't have to find a plug in to plug that in. So I went ahead and browned up my sausage just on the stove and I put all of my vegetables chopped, my onion, my celery, my carrots, my garlic, cloves, and my potatoes. All of that is in the crock pot. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the sausage on top of that. And I will season that with my broth base. I'm gonna add about two cups of water and then I'm gonna pour in my beer. You can also do salt and pepper to taste. Um, whatever you would, if you would like to add any other seasonings, you can. I just kept this one pretty simple. 
After I got all of the ingredients into the crock pot, I just gave it a stir and then I popped the lid on and I cooked mine on high for four hours. You could do this on low for probably six to eight hours. Basically, we're just trying to get those veggies nice and tender and all of the flavors mingling and the alcohol will start to evaporate out of this dish and it will leave behind the flavor of the beer. I shredded up some cheddar and some Monterey Jack because that was what I had in my refrigerator. I had about half a block of each one. So that is about eight ounces of cheese there that you saw shredded up. And after four hours, I opened up my crock pot and it was done cooking basically. So now I'm gonna add my half and half. And I started with about a cup to a cup and a half. I know it's horrible, I'm bad about measuring. I'm just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But it's about a cup and a half. And then I went ahead and put my cheese in there and gave it a stir, but I decided that I wanted it to thicken up just a tad. So I added a cornstarch slurry. I used just two tablespoons of cornstarch and a little bit of water and I added that in here in a minute, which you will see. I let this cook on high for another 30 minutes or so and then it was ready to eat. If you watch my channel regularly, you know how much I love the Walmart discount bakery rack. So I had a loaf of French bread there that I sliced up for toast. And while the soup was finishing up, we got a fire going in the chiminea. It was a beautiful fall evening, really one of our first true fall evenings we were enjoying out on the patio. And this soup really hit the spot. It turned out absolutely fantastic. It was delicious. It was really creamy and just really, really satisfying, especially on a chilly fall night. And I really Really like the flavor that the beer added to the soup. It was definitely a different flavor than other soups we have tried before. So definitely a winner for us. Tonight's crock pot soup is actually coming from one of my viewers. I posted a community post on my channel page a few weeks back asking for suggestions for crock pot meals. And I got so many awesome replies. I'm looking forward to kind of working my way through some of those throughout the winter season. And I thought it would be very fitting to include one of these in this video that I'm doing with Mandy because she often features recipes that are sent to her by her subscribers and she calls them subby suppers. So we're gonna do our own little subby supper tonight. And it is coming from Megan. It is for a creamy corn chowder and I absolutely love the post that she made because she started out by saying I don't really know if I have exact amounts but here's sort of what I do and that is definitely the way that I cook. If you watch my channel sometimes I'm like I'll just throw in a little of that and a little of this or you could sub this or sub that or I found this recipe on Pinterest but I'm going to change you know two or three or six of the ingredients according to what I have on hand so totally in line with what I normally do. So let me take you down to the countertop. I'm going to show you the ingredients that I am putting in this corn chowder. We're going to put it together and then we're also going to make some really delicious grilled turkey and cheese sandwiches to go along with it. So these are the ingredients that I am using to make Megan's creamy corn chowder. She says she uses one to two stalks of celery and one to two carrots and then also some potatoes, some small potatoes. And so this, these are six little um, golden potatoes, yellow potatoes that I got in my perfect box. So I will peel and chop all of that as necessary and put it into the crock pot with three cans of cream style corn, which I thought was really interesting. I don't think I've ever used this in a soup before. So I think this could turn out really, really great. She also says that she adds about two to three cups of chicken broth. So I'm gonna add about one and a half tablespoons of this broth base and about two and a half cups of water and also a quarter cup, which is half a stick or four tablespoons of butter. She cooks hers in the crock pot on low for seven to nine hours. It is already later in the afternoon for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the crock pot on high for a couple of hours and then bump it down down to low and about 30 minutes before we're ready to serve it, we will add some half and half. She says she adds about one and a half cups of heavy cream, but I'm going to add um, half and half instead because that's what I have. So we'll do that later. For now, we're just gonna get all of this chopped and opened and put into the crock pot and we'll get it going here for dinner tonight. One more thing that I'm going to go ahead and add to this is this everything but the elote seasoning that comes from Trader Joe's. I just picked some of this up in my most recent Trader Joe's haul. So I'm probably gonna put about one or two teaspoons of this in with that. It's gonna give it just a little bit of a spice and a little bit of a kick, which we like, and I'm interested to see how it turns out with this in it. I think it could be really good. My 
my soup has been simmering all afternoon. It actually smells really great. And I'm about to add the half and half, but I decided that I'm going to thicken the soup with a little bit of flour because we just like, you know, a little thicker soups around here if you haven't figured that out if you watch my channel. So I have about a third of a cup of flour in there and I'm pouring in about a cup and a half of half and half. And I'm going to shake this up and then add it to my crock pot and let it simmer for another 30 or so minutes until we are ready to eat it. To go along with the soup, I am going to make some grilled cheese sandwiches, and I'm going to use this sourdough bread that I picked up at Walmart today. And I am also going to use this Gouda cheese, which I will shred up myself. If you have been around my channel long enough, you've seen me make grilled cheese. I'm actually gonna make grilled turkey and cheese. I think I'm gonna put a little turkey in them as well. And I like to assemble my sandwiches directly on the griddle. I will actually just put the butter on there, put the bread on. And my other secret ingredient is that I use a little bit of whipped cream cheese inside the sandwich. And then I will put a little shredded cheese and then I'll put the other piece of bread on top and then eventually I'll flip it over, but I do everything directly on the griddle. <laughs> it just seems so much easier to do them that way. Normally I melt the butter in a little mug and then use a basting brush to brush it on the bread before I put it on the griddle. I don't recommend doing it the way that I did it here because it's probably not the safest thing. You can burn your fingers if you're not careful. So do as I say and not as I do. But this actually turned out really, really great. We had this the night that my husband's parents were coming into town and they even remarked that this was really delicious. So thank you so much for sharing it, Megan. <music> On the menu tonight is what I hope is going to turn into a meatball and ravioli soup. I have made a spaghetti and meatball soup before, but I have these little mini raviolis from Trader Joe's that I have wanted to play around with. So I decided that I would use those in this soup recipe instead. And I did kind of look around Pinterest for some different ideas, but I didn't find something that was exactly what I wanted. So I'm just kind of throwing this together myself with ingredients that I have on hand. Let me turn the camera around and I will show you the ingredients that I'm using and how I am putting this together. Here are the ingredients for tonight's soup. First off, I have a little mirepoix action going on here. I have about two small stalks of celery, two carrots peeled and chopped, and about half of an onion chopped. Plus I'm gonna throw in a little bit of minced garlic as well. I'm going to use one 24 ounce jar of prepared pasta sauce and one can of tomatoes. I'm using the basil, garlic, and oregano diced tomatoes. I get those at Aldi. Two cups of chicken broth, but I'm just going to use about one to one and a half tablespoons of this broth-based powder with two cups of water. I'm also going to add just a pinch of crushed red pepper flake because we like a little bit of kick. And this bag of meatballs, these are the party size mini meatballs that came from Trader Joe's. It's a 20 ounce package. Another kind of fully cooked meatball would be just fine. I thought about using the turkey meatballs, but I decided on these instead. But next time I might try this with the turkey meatballs. Because everything is cooked basically i'm not you know waiting on raw meat to cook i don't think that this needs to be in the crock pot quite as long so i would put this on low for three to four hours i'm going to go ahead and let mine be on high for a couple of hours and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to add some of these mini raviolis from trader joe's now these are dried they're dehydrated this is not like the fresh or the frozen ravioli so i wouldn't recommend substituting that if you don't have this or something like it like a dried tortellini not the fresh ones, then you might just use a regular pasta, like a small pasta, like a bow tie or a rotini or something like that in place of the mini raviolis that I'm using. But I'm not adding these until the end. They go don't go into the crock pot until about 30 minutes before we're ready to eat it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this stuff going in the crock pot and we'll come back and we'll add the pastas at the end. The other thing that I'm going to add to this, which is totally optional because I know a lot of people may not have this, is a Parmesan rind. This is the end, kind of the hard end of the Parmesan block. If you buy it in a block form, it actually comes in a little wedge. This is the very tail end of it, and I will often save these and put them in the freezer. And they're great to throw in the crock pot with a soup like this because it just adds a little bit of extra flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss one of my Parmesan rinds in there while it is cooking as well. Was anybody else holding their breath while I opened that jar of spaghetti sauce because you were imagining I might actually spill it all over my shirt? <laughs> I know I was. I 
I also feel like zucchini would go really well in this and I had initially planned to use zucchini in this soup. At the last minute, I decided to do a little lunch prep with that zucchini instead. So I'm just keeping it simple with the tomato products tonight. And I guess I also put some carrots and celery in there. So there's some veggies in there, but there's another idea for you if you wanted to drop some zucchini in there. I think that that would work pretty well with this or if you just kind of want to sneak in a few more vegetables into the soup, but I just kept it pretty basic for tonight. Here is my soup after it has been simmering for about two hours. I'm going to find that Parmesan rind and fish it out. Here it is, it's right here. So I will take that out and give that a stir. And now I'm going to add my little mini raviolis. I am only going to add eight ounces of these, which is half this bag. So if you were using a different kind of pasta, you would put in about eight ounces, which is about two cups dry, I believe. Well, it depends on the kind of pasta, but about eight ounces is what I'm going to put in here right now. I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it continue cooking on high for another 20 to 30 minutes or so until the pasta is done and we'll be ready to serve it. Now, Initially, I had planned to do kind of a lasagna style topping that I could put in the soup and that was going to be equal parts cottage cheese and shredded mozzarella. Just stir those together and then put like a dollop of it right in the center of the soup bowl and kind of stir it in so it would give it sort of a lasagna style flavor. I decided just to go with regular mozzarella cheese in this for tonight, but that's another idea for you if you wanted to dress the soup up a little bit of a different way. Here is what it looks like all finished. And I'm so glad that I only used half that bag or eight ounces of that ravioli. I even had to add about half a cup or so of hot water to this because I thought it was just a little too thick. So I thinned it out just a little bit, but it turned out really, really great. So we're going to get this into bowls and put some cheese on it and eat it because we're hungry. Okay, we have been munching away on this. Mine's almost gone, obviously. It's really good. The flavor is very good. The only problem is that the veggies are not quite soft enough for me. I just didn't leave it in the crock pot long enough. I got it in the crock pot late. So my suggestion to fix that, of course, is just to let it be in the crock pot longer before you add the pasta or the raviolis, whichever one that you're using, and that will fix that problem. And honestly, whenever we reheat the leftovers tomorrow, that'll fix that problem too. But it's really good. We're really pleased with it. All right, you guys, don't forget to check out Mandy's channel, Mandy in the Making. It is linked in the description box below. Thank you so much, Mandy, for doing this collaboration with me. And I will be sure to check in with another video very soon. Bye.